Now we're back again. So we set up our enemies to either start on the left side or the right side in the previous tutorial. So if our left to right equals one, we're gonna start our enemy on the left side. And if left to right equals two, start our enemy on the right side. Okay, so now we need to know what direction our enemy is going to be moving in. So if it starts on the left, obviously it's going to move towards the right. So let's set up a class member variable that we can use in some other function that we're about to set up to move our enemy. So just above our constructor function, I'm going to set up a private variable. And this is going to be a string. So I'll put S and we'll call it direction. That'll be a string. So what we want to do is, if we're starting on the left side, we want to set our direction that we're moving our enemy in. It's going to be equal to R for right. Start left, direction moving right. And likewise, if we're starting right, we want our direction to be left. Okay, so now that we've set up that position, let's set up a new function to move our enemy. So let's call this function start moving. Okay, so let's create a function for that. And we're going to add an event listener here to listen to an enter frame loop. Because remember, we're moving something, so we need to move it every time the frame updates. So once again, we're going for enter frame. And let's call this. Um, where did I have it before? Enemy loop. Okay. So I just go back to my old notes. So enemy loop is going to be our custom function that runs every frame there for our enemy. So in here, let's test what direction our enemy is moving in. So if our enemy is moving right. Let's move our enemy right. So if our direction of our enemy is right, we'll say this enemy's x position Remember to move right on the stage, we add to our X position. And for the moment, we'll just put in five. We'll come back and fix this in. Otherwise, if our S, S direction is left, we don't need to put our else if S direction because direction is only going to be equal to R or L. Let's move this enemy's X position left. So minus equals five. Okay, so let's see what this does. Let's test our code with control enter. And cool, so we've got some enemies moving across the screen. And when they go off the screen, well, yeah, they're gone. Well, they still keep animating just like our missiles did. So we'll come back and fix that up later. But we don't want our enemies to have a static um, speed, it looks kind of boring, you know, it doesn't really mix things up. So let's create a variable up here where we set up our start position. Let's pick a random speed. Let's pick a random speed for our enemy. So I'm going to create a new variable. Actually, we want to access our variable down here in enemy loop. So let's create a private variable up here. And it'll be a number, we'll call it speed. OK. 
Okay, so down here, let's pick, or let's set our end speed variable to equal a random number between, say, 5 and 8. So our enemy speed will be a little bit varied. Actually, let's go 5 and 10. So, end speed is going to be a number between 5 and 10. So then, instead of our moving our enemy just 5 units across the screen, let's move it whatever end speed is equal to. Okay, so when we test our movie now, we've got random speeds for our enemies. Some of them still are the same, but we test again. Those two are going the same speed. Oh, there we go. Just a little bit of random uh, mix-up. So, that is done. So one last thing we can do is our enemies currently, well, they're on the stage, so we'll fix that up when we create the timer class, but they're all on the altitude that we leave them at. So if I move all my clips up here, for example, and then test our movie, they're all going to come in on this altitude because we haven't actually picked a random spawn point for their altitude. So let's set that up now. So in our setup start position, just before we start moving our enemy, let's set a random altitude for our enemy. So let's pick, let's create two variables to start off with. So I'm going to uh, set up two variables for our minimum altitude and our maximum altitude. So our minimum altitude, the point where we don't want them to go below, um, let's say, what if we divide our stage's height by half? So at this point here, we don't want them to go below that point. So stage height divided by 2 will give us our minimum altitude, roughly about here. So we'll set up a new variable, it'll be a number, call it minimum altitude, data type that to a number, and we'll make that equal to our stage dot stage height divided by 2. And our maximum altitude, which will be a number as well. Let's set this to, uh, well, basically this point here. So we don't want our clip to be above the top of the stage, otherwise the player is not going to see it. So this point here is when the X position, oh sorry, the Y position of our enemy clip is zero plus half of the enemy's height. So that'll put it just in the stage. That's our max altitude. So we'll say zero plus this enemy's height divided by 2. Now let's wrap this in a bracket. And of course, we don't need the 0 at the front, so we can get rid of those two. And it's already a positive, so we don't have to put positive at the front of the brackets either. So we've got our min altitude, our max altitude. Let's get a random point in between those two. So we'll set enemies um, altitude to a random point between our min and max altitudes. So this enemy's y position is going to be a random number between our minimum altitude and our maximum altitude. So now even though our enemy clips are all positioned up here on the stage and with, where they normally all just float around at this point, 
if we test our movie now with this altitude code put in, you can see now they're at vari varying altitudes. So if I close that and test again, see they're changed around a bit more again. And one more time, yeah, that's working good. Okay, so our enemies are looking pretty good now. We've got a random enemy being picked. We've got it coming in from a random side. We've got a random speed set up for our enemy. And we've also got them coming in at a random altitude. So that's going to mix things up a little. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're probably going to go through the timer class. So instead of just having our enemies on the stage, when a timer ticks at a certain interval, say every second, it's going to spawn a new enemy. And because we've already got this code set up that positions our enemy, all we have to do is create a new enemy, it'll pick a random side and do all its randomness. So uh, yeah, we'll come back and do that one in the next tutorial. Cheers.